I need to call your attention. Um, by now, hopefully everybody understands about the QR codes on the back of your, the seat in front of you are on the back of your bulletins. You can use those to uh, give or you can use them to volunteer because we are always in need of people to serve. And uh, it's, you know, I can't express the need. You know, I hate to make it sound like we're just so needy, you know, that we're begging people to volunteer. Because volunteering is not just to meet a need, it's to find your purpose. And the only way sometimes you really know how you fit is you try something, you know. And, you know, maybe you'll find your fit is back there holding babies or on the floor playing with toddlers or teaching them a lesson. Or maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll be something else. Maybe you're, but you don't know if you don't try. It's kind of like fishing. You don't know if you don't go. So uh, anyway, I just want to encourage you in that these opportunities are there. You can, one of those QR codes, I think, will take you to the place where you can volunteer or at least, you know, let people know you want to volunteer or you're thinking about it and we can pray with you about it. And then uh, next Sunday, which is the 15th of May, we're going to have Ronnie Hill here to preach. And that always means, and I want to really uh, encourage you to invite unchurched people. Okay, if you've got friends and they're lost or they're just traveling a road you don't think they need to be on or you're just not even sure, bring them with you next Sunday, either service. And, you know, if y'all don't follow Ronnie on Facebook or uh, Instagram or Twitter, you need to do that and just see what God is doing in these meetings that he's going to now. I mean, it's just unbelievable the numbers of people who are getting saved when in these meetings. Sometimes it's a wild game dinner like they had just this past week or a bunch of people got saved. It's just a lot of things like that going on. But the, what he will tell you and I will tell you is saved people don't get saved. So if you don't have lost people there to hear then you can't expect people to be saved. And we're about people being saved. We're here to help people know Jesus as Savior and serve Him as Lord. So that first step is just getting them into the proximity of a gospel presentation. And when we have an anointed, gifted evangelist, as Ronnie is, it happens. So do everything you can to bring people next Sunday with you. Would you do that? Uh, at the end of the service, what we're going to do, this is, you know, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everybody, or mothers. But we're also going to dedicate some babies. And uh, I'm not sure how many will be here to do that uh, in this service and at the end of the second service. But here's what I'm going to do. At the end of the message, I will present the gospel just like I always do and give people a, an opportunity to come and respond to that gospel. That would be a, a, well, nobody has a kid in the back because we're not having anything in the back in the early service. So uh, as soon as we do that, then we will call up parents with babies or kids that want to be dedicated to the Lord. And we'll just call you up here to the front. I'll say a couple of things. It won't take long. Then uh, we're going to pray for you and over your children. So uh, that's the way this is going to operate. Then... Okay, in the second service, after all that, then we're going to draw for this basket here with over $500 worth of goodies in it so that somebody will win that. You don't have to be here to win that, but if you want to stay for the second service, you can. But uh, whoever wins will be contacted immediately about it. So I think I've covered pretty much everything. And uh, so now if you want to open your Bibles... To the book of Proverbs, chapter 22. Uh oh, there it is. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. And what I'm going to do this morning is I'm not going to, you know, just preach to mothers, but I am going to preach to parents and not just parents that are raising children, because 
See, I think the church has a big role in helping you to raise children, and that, that's what we want to do as a church. And so this morning, really in Proverbs chapter 22, one verse, verse 6, is almost like a manual for raising children in just a few words. Now, granted, there are a lot of things we could dive off into from that, but we're going to uh, focus on this one verse and see what God would say to us as parents and of, you know, of little children or even some of us older people can still, it's not too late to relearn things because you never know when you might need to help somebody else. Okay. Because Proverbs 22, 6, and let me just go ahead and read it, says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. And I pray, God, today that we all just be open and sensitive to the Holy Spirit as you teach us something from this verse about raising children. But also, Father, that if there's somebody here who's never committed their life to you in faith, that they would hear the gospel and be compelled by the Holy Spirit to make that commitment today of Jesus as Savior and Lord. And I thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, and also, one other thing. On Father's Day, I'm going to preach a similar thing. So I don't want mothers to feel, well, on Mother's Day, you do this. And on Father's Day, you do that. It'd be the same kind of thing, but it won't be the same passage of Scripture. It'll be a part two, but a little different. Okay? So, y'all ready? Because I'm rambling, aren't I? All right. In <laughs> Proverbs 22. Verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. First thing, there's three points, and uh, they all have to do with how we accomplish this. Our goal, see, as, and that's the first point, is to set a goal. Have something in mind that you're aiming for, that you're pointing towards. I find that in that phrase, in the way he should go. So, Every child born on this earth has a purpose, has a plan. You know, we usually claim and pray over uh, uh, Proverbs, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you are the plans that I have for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future and to prosper you and not to harm you. And that is true. But every person ever breathes a breath of air. And even before that has a purpose. God has a plan. And so as parents and even as a church and people who want to help, we need to discover what that plan and purpose is and make that our goal. If, if nothing else, as a parent, you can say, well, my goal in raising my child is to find what God has in store and point my child in that direction. Doesn't sound real complicated, does it? And it's really not it's when we get off track from that, that we get in trouble. So there is a way that every child should go. And that can really carry, I think, two, two things, two ways to apply that. One, of course, is the fact that we believe that God has a plan and a purpose for these children. And parents, that's the first thing you need to do. You look at that little baby and, and you need to remind yourself, God has a plan and a purpose for this child. And God has given me this child, not to be in the way of that, not to do it for him, but to train him up so that someday that child will fulfill the purpose that God has for him. I like to think of it as just, you know, what God wants us to do is raise up children who become productive members of society and honor him. That, that's, that's what we want for him. It doesn't matter if you want them what craft you may want them to have or what profession you want them to have. The question is, what is God's plan and purpose for this child? And that you find that by praying for the child, asking God. You find that by using uh, your discernment for the child. You can look for things. I, I know there's a, I, I have a preacher friend that several years ago 
we were somewhere together and they had a little child and he was telling us how that what they do is they don't put any kind of restrictions, uh, not restrictions, but but they didn't have a real like schedule. This was a little like toddler age or maybe even younger at the time. And because they said, well, we don't want to interfere with the kind of person God is raising. So they didn't, they just let the baby go to go to bed when it wanted to, wake up when it wanted to, eat when it wanted to. And that, that's carrying a little bit too far, don't you think? Because we have to provide some structure in which that child can flourish. And so, but still we need to pray and discern what the child's purpose is and then look for hints of that. Look for signs of it. What do they like to do as they begin to grow? What, what are they talented at? What kind of gifting do you recognize early on? What kind of heart do you see in this child? And those are the things, see, that will give you some indication of God's plan. But don't be surprised if it changes. <laughs> because it can do that. God can do He has the prerogative to do that. Okay? So find out what that plan and purpose is. And I know when we start out, we all think they're going to be some, you know, famous something. Baseball player great politician, probably not too many people pointing towards that, but business leader, a CEO of a big company or something like that. That's what we all think to begin with. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you see right off the bat, hey, that ain't happening with this kid. I mean, man, I, I think this kid's been born to be a major league baseball player. And 10, 11 years old, still can't catch a ball. Don't know one end of a bat from the other. Probably not it, right? Or I think my kid's going to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And yet this kid can't keep track of an allowance. Can't stay focused on any kind of goal or anything. That's probably not going to happen. But maybe that child is mechanically gifted. Maybe just something you see in them. And don't discourage that. See, don't try to change the plan. And then the second part of this thing is the moral element to it or the spiritual side of it. And that is that when it says that we are to train up a child in the way he should go, yes, we should find God's plan and purpose and help them to achieve that. But there is also a moral responsibility to that. The way a child should go is to walk with God. The way any child should go is to reflect something of the glory of God, that he, the image of God that he has been created in. So we want to make sure we're doing that. We want to be sure that we don't do things and lead them in a direction contrary to what God's plan and purpose is vocationally or professionally or morally or spiritually. You can't leave. I know it's a popular thing today. Some young parents think, well, we'll just let our kids grow up and they'll decide, you know, what they want to do with their religion. Well, you can do that if you want to. And it might turn out okay. But you are forsaking your responsibility as a parent to train them up in the way they should go. The way everybody should go is straight to Jesus. I mean, that's, that's not a debatable or negotiable thing. The way for every person is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ who died for them to pay for their sin and to make it all possible. That's the most important part of all of this. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the second thing is to begin the training process. Now, go back to the beginning of that verse and Solomon says there, train up a child. Train the child in the way he should go. He didn't say teach the child the way he should go, but rather he said to train the child in the way he should go. Sometimes kids will just find their way. I mean, sometimes, you know, they'll just find out what God's plan and purpose is and they'll do it. But we are to be trainers Personal trainers for these kids to make sure they get where God wants them to go. And how can you know how to train if you don't know the purpose and the plan? If you don't have that goal, my goal is for my child to fulfill God's purpose in his life. And if you don't agree with that, 
and you don't know what he's supposed to do, then how are you going to provide training? Training is specific, looking for a specific outcome. That's what training means. It's, it's not teaching. There, there's a difference in teaching and training. In teaching, you provide information. But in training, you repeat behavior. You, you know, you can get to a personal trainer and say, man, I want to lose some weight and I want to, you know, really buck up. And, you know, I want to be strong and I want to look good doing it and all of that. And that trainer can tell you, well, read this book, read that book, and here's how this works, here's how that works, and give you all of this information. <laughs> it doesn't help a bit. What helps is getting in the gym. What helps is pumping the iron. What helps is changing the diet. What helps is the work that you put into it. That's the training. The teaching may be good, but it, without the training, it's absolutely useless. Our job is not just to teach them. It's not just to tell them. It's not just say, well, you got to do this because I said so. It is to train them in doing it. Let me th think. Uh, if you've ever raised show cattle, okay, for example. And some of you probably have, or you've been around the ring where they, they show cattle. And one of the things they'll do with a, a calf is they'll put it in the stall or in, next to a fence with a halter on, and they tie the head up like this. Y'all ever done that or seen that done, right? And, and it looks kind of cruel, <laughs> to be honest, at, at times, because they just stand there for a long time with that head up like that. But why is that? It's because when they go into the show ring, they don't want it going in like this. They want it going in with that head up, because that's the way to show the cow. That's what the judge is looking for. And so if you don't repeat that over and over and over, it won't do it. And the goal, see, is to repeat it enough that sooner or later it feels natural. It, it will feel natural. And, and the, the calf will, will adapt to that and, and be holding that head up more likely. Or another thing demonstrates the same uh, principle is if you have a plant like an ivy, for example, or something that, that, you know, puts out runners and it grows. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And it, it'll just go everywhere. So you have a plant, you put it in a planter, or maybe you have it in the flower bed, and you put up a trellis behind it because you want that plant to grow on that trellis, right? So you go out there and you, you watch, and you know how they'll put out runners, and you notice the runners are not going on the trellis, well, what do you do? Do you holler and scream? You're supposed to be on that trellis. I told you that trellis would work. No, what do you, what do, you do? You pick up those runners and you kind of weave it into a trellis a little bit and you leave it. You go back later and you keep watching for that. And you want every one of those runners that comes out to take its place on that trellis and grow that way. That's training. That's training. That's the way we are to be with our children. It's not about, you know, I, I get so frustrated sometimes when I hear these grown men talk about how their daddy did this to them and beat them and all of that stuff. Because I'll promise you, there are more of them that didn't turn out good than did. Because that's not the way to do it. I, I'm not against punishment. But the thing is, if you don't correct the problem, if you don't correct the behavior, just punishing the behavior doesn't work. You have to train them. If your kid is mouthy and smarting off to people, you have to sit down with that kid and talk to them about why that's not good for them. You have to explain to them. And yes, that's just teaching. But the training comes in when you react to people. See, how do you react? What do you say about other people? If you want your children to be respectful of other people, then you have to be respectful of other people. Because if you go out there and your child puts out a runner of disrespect and you pick it up and you put it on that trellis of respect, but then you turn around and start bad-mouthing everybody you know, every politician, every school teacher, everybody that's ever done anything wrong, your child is learning the wrong lesson. So you have to train them. You want them to have a close walk with God? How close is your walk? Most children will never have a closer walk with the Lord than their parents do. 
If all church is to you is just a place where we go there on Sundays because it, you know, we see our friends and we like to hear a sermon and blah, 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 blah. But we aren't going to get involved in it. That's the wrong act. You're not training them. You know, if, if we would train our children in missions and train our children in church work, train our children to tell their friends about Jesus, train our children to be good people, train our people that it's important to give, that it's important to serve. If we would train them by doing that ourselves, we wouldn't have to spend so much time teaching them because they just see it and catch it naturally. See, the, the goal when it comes to church stuff is you want it to be a natural thing for the children. You want it to feel good when they get there. You want it to feel natural. And, you know, if, if I doubt that there's anybody that thinks this way. But if you may think, well, we need better programs. You know, we need better children's programs. Well, <laughs> did I not just a few minutes say how desperately <laughs> we need people? People with that vision? People with that dream, people who want that for their children. How about coming and being a part of the training instead of just complaining about it? You, you see what I'm saying? Train them up. I remember uh, everybody probably knows Dale Frankham who passed away a few years ago at First Assembly in Brazoria. Dale was one of the most godly men I think I've ever known in my life. He actually practiced what he preached. In fact, I had a friend who was had started going to their church and we were talking one day and he said, you know, that Pastor Dale, he believes that stuff he preaches. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm not going to take that as meaning I don't, but <laughs> you know, but you, you know what I'm saying? But Dale shared with me a story one time. He said when he was a little boy and their church, you know, first assembly was the only church he ever went to. And he said their church was going through a bad time and it weren't, you know, they'd had a preacher maybe that wasn't nice to people and anyway you know how those things work but they had a work day at the church so him and his daddy and I guess his brothers they all go up for the work day and they're the only ones that show up and he said he said something to his daddy like well if nobody else is up here doing it why are we doing it and his daddy said because this is what we do we serve it doesn't matter what anybody else does. What are we doing? And boy, do you think that didn't catch on? If you'd ever been around Dale, you know it caught. He learned, he was trained, see, to do that. And that, that's the attitude. That's the way we train up our children. All kids have to be trained in godliness. You want your kids to be people that can quote scripture? You want your kids to be people that... Talk about Jesus like he's their friend, like they really know him. Start training them in that. Let them know Jesus is available. Let them know from an early age. You get up in the morning and, and read your Bible, and maybe before they can read, you read it to them. And, and that becomes a natural part of their life. Then they'll have that relationship with him. But that's our job as parents is to do that. And I'm, I'm glad we have so many godly parents around who take these things seriously and who do it. And if you didn't start out that way, it's okay. It's never too late to change it. Okay. Number three. Keep your eye on the goal or on the prize. It finishes this verse by saying, when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child, got the training, in the way he should go. That's the goal. That's understanding what God's called him to do and godliness in the way he should go. And then when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, many people have memorized this verse and quoted this verse over their children and claimed this promise over their children, and you should. But I, I've heard often a misunderstanding of what this passage is saying. Because I've prayed with people, and I've probably prayed this way too, parents that had children that had gone astray, maybe they're teenagers or young adults, and they're not serving the Lord, and they've gotten away. And we go back and say, well, the Bible says, and we're praying, Lord, you said train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. 
It doesn't say he will come back. That, that's the, what we claim so often is that, well, when he's old, then he'll come back to it. But that word depart has nothing to do with coming back, has everything to do with leaving. In fact, the word is used to describe uh, like tearing a page out of a book or tearing something off of something. It's a painful experience. And so what he's saying is if you do your job, you train them, you discover God's purpose and plan for their life and you train them towards that. If you will do that, then when they get old, they won't leave that. Now, somebody sitting up there, I know, thinking, well, I did mine and they still went astray. I'm sorry. You know, I, but I, I just want to correct this thing. Ultimately, it will be your child who makes the choices of where they spend their life and how they spend their life. But doesn't it make better sense? To pour yourself into training them towards the way they should go. And then, if anything, if they do depart from that, it's not an easy thing for them to do. You see, we have this third person of what we call the Trinity. He is the Holy Spirit. And he is more concerned with your children's outcomes than you are. And so when you train them in the ways of God and in the things of God, the way they should go. Then when they get old or older, and the word there literally means maturity. And, and I think what it's saying is when they reach that point where they're no longer under training because they're, they're not in your house anymore and they're, you know, they've, they've outgrown that in a way. When that happens, when they come to that point in their life, if they choose to leave, it won't be easy because the Holy Spirit will be there every minute of every day. The Holy Spirit will be there reminding them of their training. The Holy Spirit will be there convicting them of sin when they sin. The Holy Spirit will be there presenting the love of God to them. The Holy Spirit will be there. You can't be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but the Holy Spirit can. And if you, when you raise up your children, to know the Lord and they accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior and they're seeking to serve Him. And then maybe you send them off to college and we all worry about sending them off to some liberal professors and all this and we're worried about what will happen. If you have done the proper training, it will be harder for them to leave that training than it will be to stay with that training. And yes, I know the devil works hard to try to separate us, but if the Holy Spirit is there, and he will be if they've accepted Jesus and you've released them into that. Every, <coughs> every time there is a temptation, the Holy Spirit will be there. It's sort of like if you're in training, you know, your body and you set the alarm to get up at four o'clock in the morning every day. So you have time to go to the gym. And every now and then that clock goes off. And you think, man, it's only four o'clock. A few minutes won't matter. So you push the snooze. And that snooze button will kill you because that clock will come back and it, that alarm will go off again. And you punch the snooze and it'll go off again. You see, that's kind of like the Holy Spirit. You may put him off a little bit, but he's not going to forget. And he will, he will stay after it. He will stay after it to keep your children even in times when you can't be there to keep them. He, you trust him. Teach your children to trust him. Teach your children that, yeah, if you do make a mistake, if you make a bad choice, you can always, always depend on the Holy Spirit to be there to remind you and to lead you so that you confess it, repent, turn of it, and he'll be right there to bring you back. So you don't have to later pray, Lord, you said, if I'd train them in the right way, even when they're old, they'll come back. Now, pray that they don't ever leave in the first place. Trust the Holy Spirit with them. That's what we need to do. Trust Him. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Yeah, training can be hard on the trainer as well as the trainee. It... And it's a tremendous responsibility to raise people. 
I mean, somebody raised me. Somebody raised you. Somebody invested that time and effort in your life. And you need to do that in your children's lives. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when you want to slap them or whatever. Train them. Train them. Remember, it's the training that matters. It's the training that will keep them. And don't ever, ever forget that. And as a church, we need to remember that. We're training kids. We're, we're training. We're, we're, we want to stand along with parents and help provide training. We want to do our part. And together, church, parents, family, we can raise kids that will absolutely change the world. I have no doubt about that. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to, we're going to pray. And I'm going to present and make a quick gospel presentation. And I'm going to ask if there's anybody here without Jesus who wants to be saved to come forward this morning. Then I'm going to call the parents up with the children and we'll pray over them. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I thank you. For your word, and I thank you, Lord, for anybody who might be listening to this message, whether in-house or Facebook Live. Maybe you didn't have the benefit of parents who knew about training. And I, I'm sorry if you didn't. But the Bible also teaches us that we all have that opportunity to come to Jesus. And this morning, you have that opportunity if you've never done so. You have the opportunity today to confess your sin. Confess that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sin and that he rose from the dead. And if you'll trust him in that, he'll come into your heart and change you, make you a new creature. And I want to give you the opportunity right now to do that. So I'm going to pray. And if you'd like to receive Jesus as your Savior, pray this prayer with me right now. Father God, I confess that I'm a sinner and I am sorry for my sins. Today, I want to turn away from my sin and I want to turn to you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that he was buried and I believe that he rose from the dead. So please forgive me of all my sin. And Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. And I'm making you my Lord, boss, today. Thank you, Lord. Anybody in here right now with heads bowed, eyes closed, you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you look up here at me just for a minute, please? And so I can just give you some instruction. Anybody? My left. How about in the center section here? Anybody? How about over on my right? Anybody? Okay, I don't see anybody. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're just going to, I'm going to pray. And then when I finish praying, if you have a child that you brought today to be dedicated to the Lord, then you can come and bring that child. Father, in Jesus' name, if there is someone here, Lord, who maybe prayed that prayer and for whatever reason just couldn't look up, then I pray the Holy Spirit of heaven to be with them, pursue them, in Jesus' name, amen.